as a landlord, have you received any money from the government on tenants that haven't paid? Have you gotten any of that yet? Yeah. Yeah. So like in awesome. Georgia, our management company is rock stars at it. And, and usually like I, our, our B class and A class areas still workforce housing, but good areas. We haven't had a lot of tenants that got tripped up because of COVID and their job or anything like that. And we collect 99.7% of all the rents in wow. those properties. Wow. And the C class areas, different story, right? Yeah. And we're, we're chasing rents. There's a bunch of tenants game mm -hmm. in the system. And it might be like, it was 1% the, the first month. And then it was another 1%. And then all of a sudden it starts snowballing. And now it's 15, mm -hmm. 20% of the tenants are just gaming the system because they know they don't have to pay rent. Right. And that, that can mess you up. But the good news is we were, you know, the government did come out with some stuff to help the landlords a little bit if you know how to navigate that. But our, our management company was trained on how to do that. And they sat down with the tenants, applied with them. And it was something along like it was it was like six months of back rent and three months of future rent or, or vice versa. It was something along those lines. Nice. And um, we, we got a lot of people signed up kind of on those programs. Um, I think they're kind of nearing the end right now. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, fortunately, they lifted the eviction moratorium. So we're having a lot of conversations with people right now. You know, what I don't want is I don't want a mass exodus of tenants and I don't want to, have right. to turn all these units and outlay all sorts of cash. And although I'm, I'm salty with these tenants who did kind of just game the system and didn't pay because they knew they didn't have to pay. Right. I, I'm also, I'm, I'm almost like, I, I got to let my ego go and do what's the most economically responsible thing. Um, right. for me and my tenants or me and my investors is right. we're having conversations with them now and saying, Hey, listen, okay. All right. You got one over. Here's the thing. We will not evict you. If you catch, you know, we'll try to put some sort of payment plan together or some sort of sure. pay 20% of it and we'll waive the rest of it. And then we'll, um, and these are for people who didn't get the subsidy assistance. Right. And then as long as you pay rent, you're on a short leash though. If you don't pay rent by the first of the month, there is no, there's no, you know, um, uh, wiggle room at all on this thing. So right. we're having some of those conversations because I'd rather keep tenants in and just paying sure. rent sure. rather than having to uh, go through the whole process. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think a lot of people realize like, Oh, well, if I can keep my utilities down or this down, like, yeah, that's, that's good. The biggest expense for landlords is tenant turnover. Right. And the more you can reduce your turnover, the greater your return is going to be substantially. And because mm -hmm. not only are you not collecting rent, then I got to pay an attorney, then I got to pay court costs, then right. I got to move their stuff into a storage locker for a little bit if they don't take it all. Um, and then I have to renovate the unit, then I have to pay a leasing agent to lease it. And then I have, to, you know, it's just there's so much stuff Absolutely. that comes into it and it sits vacant for another three months, you know? So mm -hmm. um, if you can eliminate or reduce that as much as possible, as as much and principled in me as I want to be, like no, get the heck, get the heck out of my right. out of my properties. Right. I'm not. Uh, I, I I just I'm not doing that right now. I think it's way more responsible to just have a conversation, you know, and um, uh, just have that dialogue back and forth and try to get them back into a routine of being responsible and paying their payments on time. Right. So, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, being in that business and, and most at least a lot of people are trying to make the landlords uh, look like, like the bad, the bad guys. Guy. Yeah. Um, it, it is business and you have to treat it like a business, but most uh, landlords, property owners are, are very compassionate people. They try to work with folks, uh, but they also have, have to pay their have bills. The business yeah. uh, side to think of. And, you know, it, it's a shame. Some, some people, uh, fall through the cracks. Some people dive through the cracks, uh, <laughs> and, and they they do it on purpose. And you gotta you gotta weed those folks out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and, and, yeah. and listen, I'm I'm talking about you know the ones that are top of mind because they're the sure. biggest problem child. But sure. really, it's a handful of people across four thousand right. units. You know, so yeah. overall, we're doing all right. And oh, I don't want to scare anybody from getting into rental properties. It's just, um, hey you're a problem solver. You know, the bigger That's problems right. you can solve, the more money you're going to make and, and the more wealth you can build, the more people you can help and a lot of other things that can come with it. So um, expect problems. And the bigger the problem, guess what? That's the bigger the opportunity it is. So That's um, right. don't let it derail you mentally and just stay on track and just keep on solving more problems. That's right.